My producer's talking about shrooms at a wedding. That's an interesting cold open. It is Wild Card Week. We're getting wild on the show, getting pretty amazing uh, with the matchups, and we will break those all down. Darius Butler, Mark Ingram on the show, and NFL head coaching market. We're breaking down the current vacancies. What's the most attractive destination? Sean Payton, line one. Conrad. Wedding? Do you have a wedding coming up, Conrad? In my ear? Conrad, I'm a great wedding date if you need a wedding date. Can you imagine? Uh, hey, welcome to the show, everybody. I think I'm, I'm frozen from the inside out. Some kind of California this is. Uh, if you saw my, I put up a TikTok. I was that bored waiting for the, <laughs> thank you, Marissa. I was so bored waiting for the gas person to show up. And by the way, shout out to gas people. I had a man fully in the torrential downpour under my house yesterday. I don't know people could, it's very disconcerting to know that someone can go under your, it's a very like people under the stairs, 90s uh, horror movie throwback situation, but thankfully the heat is back on in my residence, but I do believe that I froze from the inside out. I'm like tearing up on the program today, but I'm also just so emotional because it's wild card weekend. We have Hamilton joining us right now uh, as we dive into some of the key teams to prepare for the weekend. Darius Butler will stop by to take us to Shutdown City, of course, and Mark Ingram laying down the law as always with our edition of Red Card uh, and Cam Jordan's on the show tomorrow we'll start some beef between the two of them of course now with the firing of Cliff Kingsbury yesterday there are now one two three four five available head coaching jobs across the league and I believe we got a couple more to add to the list once the playoffs are said and done oh yes I do now University of Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh he's just like you know what I'm gonna just put some drama in here and mix it in because he uh, uh, reportedly interviewed virtually for the Broncos gig on Monday. So we know the Broncos have request out to Sean Payton, Dan Quinn, D'Amico Ryans, and Raheem Morris, uh, which is interesting. And then you got the Panthers. They're interviewing former Colts head coach Frank Reich, and that would be a cute uh, storyline there. There's a homecoming for him. He was the first quarterback to ever start a game for that organization. But then you have this thing where it's like, oh, you want to root for Reich, but Steve Wilkes, he needs to get that job, in my opinion. And I think Darius Butler will agree with me as he joins us shortly. Uh, and I think it would be really nice to see Tepper come out. Tepper, who was missing from action to wrap up the regular season, go – Rip, rip up that interim tag, light a match to that and get rid of it and let Wilkes, as his players are saying, we think he deserves a shot to lead this team. But we'll see Tep Tepper, not, uh, not a set settler, not someone who wants to settle. If Literally, if Sean Payton wasn't with the Saints and didn't get traded, that's where I would put Sean Payton because I think Tepper is the kind of guy who's like, here's the checkbook. What, how many zeros do you need to be here? And I think that's very important to Sean Payton and that he can break the, book, the bank for him. And uh, other, if it wasn't an interdivision thing, I could see that being a fit. And it's all really, where is Sean Payton going to go? Is Jim Harbaugh the second most likely candidate to land wherever he wants? Does he want that Broncos job? Lots of questions in the air. And we will keep you updated with anything else that might happen this morning. But we do want to talk about that job in the desert for a second. Let's bring in Matt Hamilton here. Hamilton, who owns a home because he's an idiot. Anybody who's a homeowner, I don't know what anybody's thinking out there. It's, dev it's, it's really hard work. <laughs> It really is. There's constantly something going wrong, and it's 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 a lot of fun. Like, does anybody out there like anybody heard of a, a like a, a condo, an apartment, having someone to call maintenance people to take care of things for? Like, when you have a home, it is a terrifying venture. I love how you are figuring this out right now um, before our eyes. It's 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 fun to watch. You're you're growing up. We're trying um, to find gas all. gas lines, and then there's furnaces, and then there's humidifiers <laughs> with the furnaces that can flood your house. I've learned more about home ownership, uh, and it's does not suitable for me. I need a door person, and I need <laughs> someone else to be like. Obviously, if you could just absolve me of any accountability, that is the, the sort of world I want to live in. <laughs> It says a lot. I'm not. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna go there. Um, y you said everything there is to say. I don't think you're surprised about that. All right, but let's. let's no. On the matter of accountability, <laughs> let's venture into this world. Remember the store venture? Anybody have those in Chicago? There used to be a store called Venture. It was kind of like a Kmart. It was like a black and white stripe. Anyone? Has anyone out there ever heard of the store Venture? Hit me up. Oh, no. come on. Harlem Irving Plaza in Chicago. That's where they had it at the hip. Okay. Loopy I am this morning. But we have to talk about this. Um, Cliff Kingsbury, Kyler Murray, Steve Kime, Michael Bidwill conversation. Listen, I was in Rwanda. And I'm, I told you, I, I go on to visit the gorillas 
and I'm put into a group. And I told, told this story on McAfee. I'm put into a group, and there's 500 people there on any given day, and they put them into groups of which family are you going to see of these um, silverback gorillas. And I, you know, I have my shades on, I got my hat on, I'm whatever, and I sit in my group and there's probably like eight of us and I hear Kay and I go, what? And it's Michael Bidwell. And I go, wait, what? And there's, you know, how do I kismetly get put into this group? And there was so much excitement and hope for the season with this Arizona team because there's so much talent on this squad, Hamilton. And then this year happens, and now Steve Keim has walked away, a longtime friend of Bidwell that cannot be easy, that it's got to be hard, and Cliff Kingsbury, who he minted to get paid up the wazoo till 2027. It's unbelievable. And I don't know, I, I would love to know, what is the moment Bidwell this year was like, you know what, we're going to cut ties with them. What was the one failing moment that existed this year that didn't exist last year. Uh, so let's talk about it. Your thoughts on the attractiveness of the job. Is it more attractive because you have a Pro Bowl quarterback under contract for the next six years, one that has the talent to do it? Or does it scare you because you have a quarterback who's the third highest paid in the NFL, already has a bunch of question marks about him, and now has a torn ACL he's coming off of? Yeah, no, I, th I think it was clear. I don't know if there was one specific moment, but all the issues that we saw to end last year carried over to this season. There was a clear disconnect uh, between Cliff and Kyler. And, you know, we don't know enough to say whose fault it is or, or place blame or anything like that. But the organization, they clearly backed Kyler Murray last offseason. I know they extended any, but everybody. But once you give that contract out to the quarterback, to the player, that's the one that's hardest to get out of. And then when they removed that independent study clause, that was a clear indication that, hey, we're siding with Kyler Murray. He's our guy. And when you look at this as a potential coach, I think if you're an offensive minded head coach, you have to love the potential of Kyler Murray at 25 years old with the arm talent, with the mobility, with all the things he can do. He's a unicorn at the position. And mm -hmm. uh, I think you want that you want your hands on that type of player and you think, hey, I can get this guy straightened out. We could do some special things together. So that sounds like somebody with a healthy ego. And it reminds me of Coach Sean Payton <laughs> going and saying, Jameis is my guy. Yeah. Coach Sean Payton said, you know what? Number one overall pick. He can throw for 5,000 yards. And I bet you I can cur curtail those interceptions like I, he saw you know you, you fall in love with the talent and the potential of what you see in a quarterback and can you make him your franchise guy and towards the you know towards the end of of Jameis being healthy uh when he was on the field with Sean Payton calling the shots there he looked better didn't he so like there is there's a there's a there's a an ego that it takes to say oh I, I can get the best out of Kyler it was Cliff Kingsbury's problem he couldn't he, you know he was a two player friendly coach he he had Patrick Mahomes in college we're seeing those takes out of the woodwork he couldn't win with Patrick Mahomes blah blah blah, blah all of that and you look at it objectively it, there are concerns here Kyler had his worst year objectively worst winning percentage yards per game worst passer rating of his career when you bring up the concern of the ACL tear Long term, you know, you know, I asked you before the show, like, who are quarterbacks that have come off an ACL tear? They're defined, right? Like, your first answer was Tom Brady. Well, obviously, he plays a little bit differently than Tom Brady, but you know, or, or Joe Burrow. But you look at it from the mobility standpoint, with what we're seeing with medicine and everything going on today. You see what Saquon's doing this year, coming off an injury like that. We've seen runners in the past, like Jamal Charles, Adrian Peterson, they bounce back immediately. So I'm not really worried about the ACL as much. I am worried about what you're, what you've heard all year, and what we know, Hamilton, about Kyler Murray. Like I, I defended him a lot because I also fell in love with the talent. But he's out there and he's you know arguing with his best wide receiver who's got questions as well. But Hammy, what do you make of that? Because it's not just physical. It's not just what he can do on the field. It's can somebody get through to this quarterback? Can someone, you know, say to him, take my my calls and it becomes a question of was the play calling awful and so Kyler was like I need to step up and do what I want to do or is Kyler just like I'm awesome and I'm gonna do what I want and you have to follow what I, my lead out there and I'm just gonna free ball it the whole time is free ball appropriate I'm sorry <laughs> I think freelance would be more appropriate but um but no I think you hit it right look on it the up. head continue <laughs> okay I think that's the biggest concern that any potential head coach has here yeah. is and I think that's where you have to kind of you have to kind of do your homework and, and talk to people in that organization and get a feel for what 
was going on with Kyler Murray and yeah. where that issue might lie. Because uh, as we said, the, the talent's tremendous, but there's clearly something that wasn't working there. And I think the removal of the independent study clause, I know it drew so much backlash and it's, you know, but you're handing over that type of money. He's the third highest paid quarterback in the NFL uh, to put that in. If you do still have reservations, I think it was, you know, it was something if Kyler agreed to, and I think it was fair to put that in and to hold some type of accountability. And the fact that that was in there to begin with tells me that there were things that Kyler was not doing right. that the organization felt he needed to do. It's super sus. Who's going to find that attractive over a job that might not even be open yet, a team that's going to the playoffs and maybe one or done? I think there's there's two teams that I can think of right now that if they're one and done, in the playoffs wild card weekend, those head coaches might be moved because those teams are ready to go. And, you know, you can say a coach, and I'll name them even, like a, a McCarthy or a Brandon Staley, like, you got us here, you got us the playoffs with so much adversity, but if they're bounced in the first round, there has to be a thought of, yes, I love this person I'm dating my senior year of college, and they bring, they carry my books to my class, and they did such a great job, and they stuck with me when I was, you know, going through puberty and all of that. But when it comes to who I'm going to the prom with, if the hottest guy in school is going to ask me on the date, like, I'm going to say yes. Like, if the, you know, the quarterback for the football team is going to come and say, like, come to the prom. So if you have, like, a Sean Payton or a Jim Harbaugh swoop in, that's a conversation that these front offices have to have, but it also comes with trading picks, and it also comes with writing really hefty checks to those potential quarterbacks or potential coaches for um, those attractive quarterbacks that are in the playoffs. I want to get to your um, to your jabs here, and, and we'll, of course, talk about Cliff. Does Cliff coach next year? Ian Rappaport, our guy, saying lots of, like, he'll be in Bora Bora sipping, you know, drinks out of coconuts uh, kind of vibe, which I could see happening. Um, I could. I, like, I wouldn't expect anything less. Well, I don't know. I like the connective <laughs> I think he's a worker. You know, Michael Bidwell said in yeah. his parting words that over his tenure, and Michael Bidwell has been around that team a very long time, decades, that he's never seen somebody put in more work. And that matters when you're a coach. And I think people think Cliff maybe is out or do it like, no, I, I, I truly believe with what I know from him, a very dedicated coach, somebody who's almost obsessed with the game and the way that coaches are and need to be. And so I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up with a Bill Belichick or, you know, does he want to put himself through that, being in New England, all of that that comes with that. I think he's sort of built that way. And I wouldn't be surprised uh, if that happened. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if he, yeah, if he is, like, if I run into him in Ibiza over the over the winter break, which is where I'll be doing the show from. Anyway, okay, we got to give love to your uh, AFC South champions, your Jags, Rayshon Jenkins, of course, the strip sack. Let's just show it. I think we're going to talk to Rayshon Jenkins this week. I believe he is set to be on our show. And we are excited about that, of course. The scoop and score from Josh Allen. Listen, this is a tight game. Jags trailed the Titans by four games in the division standings in week 11 and came all the way back to take the crown. Everybody was hating on the uh, Christian Kirk contract. I just want to talk about that for a second. He had 99 yards and a touchdown. So shut up, everybody. He put up career highs, 84 catches, 1,108 yards, and eight touchdowns. The Jags would not be here without a him. And by the way, he's the 18th highest paid receiver on a per year basis, okay? 18th. He finished... Ahead of that, 14th in yards, 18th in catches, 11th in receiving touchdowns. So market value, he actually ended up outperforming what he was paid this year. So sneer at that, people who didn't like that he was getting paid by those Jags. They host the Chargers on Saturday night on NBC. And Mike Williams better be ready for that game where Brandon Staley and I are going to have something to talk about other than yoga next time I see him. Jacksonville's uh, first playoff appearance since 2017, the AFC title game in New England. And uh, we got to talk about those Chargers. But I know you want to give love. Hammy, give love before we take a break to those Jags. I'm sure you're very excited about this. I remember very well the um, Yannick Ngakwe 2017 Jags. Yeah, and I, I think uh, it, it looked, the Jags looked like a team that was getting their first taste of a game of this magnitude on Saturday night. You know, they got off to a little bit of a slow start. They were trailing most of the game. Uh, but we saw Trevor settle down as the game went along and that huge play from Rayshon Jenkins that you showed uh, I think it was an important moment for them before they get into playoff action. They kind of got a little taste of it. They got that out of the way. They got some of those jitters out of the way. And they've just been getting stronger and stronger every week, winning six of their last seven games. This is a really hot team right now uh, with a really talented quarterback that's playing at the top of his game. So uh, I know a lot of people aren't really worried about the Jaguars with everything else going on in that AFC, but but they can, they can wreck the party for somebody if uh, – 
if if uh, one of those top seeds has an off day. They took care of business against the Chargers, 38 to 10. I, I kept sending you tweets uh, weeks ago about how Chargers fans were like, we didn't have Keenan in that game. We were a different team. Uh, do you think the Jags were a different team now than they were? Is Who's a hotter team right yeah. now? Who has more momentum going into this weekend? The Chargers, who rolled out their starters, got them banged up, and lost the game to the Broncos and let Russell Wilson have some positivity going in the offseason? Are you joking? Or is it the Jags? who also defensively looked amazing bottling up Derrick Henry, and now you've got Eckler that you're going to have to deal with. You're, you know, there might be some one-dimensionality going on with this Charger squad that never really finds, found a rhythm on offense this year. So let's talk about that. So the Chargers, they've been locked into the five seed all along. They played everybody against the Broncos. Meaningless game. Williams suffers back spasms. Hopefully he's okay. Joey Bosa left the game as well. Uh, I was so angry watching this game, and then my mood sort of changed going into this weekend's action. But Staley said this after the game, quote, hindsight is perfect for everybody on the outside, but these games are not easy to manage. They're not because you don't have that many players. We did it to the best of our ability. We were trying to compete in the game, and we only have 48 guys on the team that are active for the game. Hamilton. What? Like, the argument, if he came out and said, Joe Lombardi needs to work out some things, we haven't had these guys healthy together, and we need some rhythm because we're taking on offenses like the Bengals, the Bills, the Chiefs, and the Jags who are on fire right now, so we really need to feel our best. Whatever, let's ride. That's a different story. This is, like, a weird answer because you did pull your – like, my answer to that as a reporter would be, well, but, but you somehow managed to pull your starters – Later in the game, so you did have the players that it took to get them out. So when you were up, four, when you were up 14-7, that wasn't a comfortable time for you to say, "Let's rest these guys." I'm just a little confused, but I also kind of don't care. I don't want to be negative because the Chargers are here, and I should shut up. Yeah, and and also the the odd part about it to me, and I get it. You have to play some guys because you only have so many players on the roster yeah. in the NFL. But look at what the Giants did. Daniel Jones did not see the field. Came on mm. Thibodeau was Thibodeau was active, did not see the field. Saquon, Leonard Williams, Andrew Thomas all didn't even dress for the game. And they fielded a team and they got through the game. So you look at what some of these other teams did, they were able to do it. And I think that's that kinda is what falls on you as that coach is figure out a way to do it to protect your guys going into a playoff game. And and it, luckily, it doesn't seem like the Mike Williams yes. thing is too bad. I think we're still waiting on the severity of what's going on with Joey Bosa. But it is it's, it is a little bit concerning that he he couldn't kind of figure out how to make that work. Unless there was a mo another motivation, maybe he didn't want to say we want to get in rhythm because yeah. he's trying not maybe. to throw certain people under the bus. But um, it was a curious decision to me, for sure. I mean, especially with a team that's had so many injury issues. Yeah. all year where it's like aren't you a little but that's kind of like we all have don't we all have a Brandon Staley in our lives where it's like you're gonna live or die like they're gonna you're gonna end up in jail one night after a night being out but they're also gonna like give you the best memories of your life in another world you know what I'm saying like every other like you don't really know what you're gonna get so I'm watching this game and I'm like don't you see what's gonna happen here don't you know Mike Williams is gonna get hurt don't you know <clears throat> Keenan like it will get an injury like what are you doing and then those you know those things happen and we sort of leave sort of unscathed hopefully all of our you know good vibes towards Mike Williams ahead of this game because they're gonna need everything they're gonna need everything that they have against this Jags team um, even though Chargers fans don't seem to believe that. Uh, so we left the game and it's fine, but he, you know, he's the guy who's going to go for it, right? He's going to go for two, he's going to go for it on fourth, like whatever, and that's fine and we love that. It's these sort of things that are like reckless where you want to bubble wrap people and just sort of shake him and say like, no, 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 we're not getting that extra round of beers. Like, no, 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 we're leaving the bar. Check, check please. Uh, that he sort of doesn't have in him. But I'll say that, you know, if you're going to put them out there, and let's assume that maybe there isn't an, another motive, and it is rhythm, and it is chemistry, like they didn't look great. They looked, they've looked like credit to Joel and Barty, they've looked a little bit better. But offensively, we're looking at it, over the last five games, they're four in a run, but they're just 13th in points per game. So it hasn't really been clicking. So I do think it's fair to, if he wanted to say, or his actual thought was, let's get them out there and see what they can do because we're going to need everything we have on offense. And then defensively, Hamilton, Travis Etienne is no joke. And now he's scoring touchdowns as he was a K-maker last week. And this run defense is 28th, I think, in the NFL with the Chargers. So a little bit worried about that this weekend as we start to, like, scratch at this matchup a little bit. I know it's too early to be previewing like this. I'm just very <laughs> excited.
Yeah, and the Chargers have had some issues uh, all year in that run, uh, really over the last couple of years yeah. of that run defense. Kenneth Murray hasn't quite worked out the way they wanted him to when they drafted him in the first round. And you're right, that Jaguars run game has really come together. We've seen them do some some fun stuff there, too, with ETN and Wildcat, yeah. Kirk in the backfield, Agnew in the backfield. They'll throw some wrinkles at you. Doug Peterson, we know, is super creative, so there's a lot you have to prepare for. But you're right, with that Chargers offense, with all the talent they have, it just hasn't – they haven't looked as explosive as you would expect an offense with that type of talent with Justin Herbert to look. But we're criticizing a team that got to the playoffs, fought through adversity, expelled yeah. an entire <laughs> negative – cloud of psychology over the past five or six or seven years of not being able to finish games and having fluky weird things happen to them and now they are healthy they do have momentum they're in the playoffs they've got a great coach who's will go for it and free ball when he needs to i'm saying it it's not inappropriate i looked it up on urban dictionary and i also <laughs> feel as you as we head to break here like we just I was mad at him like I was mad at someone I'm dating for doing something dumb or a reckless friend for like you're you're making a mistake here and now I'm not mad cuz we're good and they might have Slater back this week they're healthy they're clicking they're getting it done and uh, they're going to win this game against the Jags I said it all right, Darius Butler, and don't bring Hamilton back to yell at me. We've got him on the show after this. I mean, did you even sleep, Darius Butler? Did you no. even sleep? No. Well, do some push-ups. No. We'll see you in a minute. The city! Something Philly now. Let's get it. Let's go to the playoffs, baby. Let's go! We already know this day is way bigger than me and anybody else. Just thank you guys for supporting and praying for my dog, Lamar. Getting a standing ovation here. Yeah. We run a dirty south. South with a hell. My T.A. I am so proud of this group. So proud of the way y'all work. I just can't describe this moment. No team with better momentum going into the playoffs than what you guys have done. We got to focus at one day at a time. Well, we got one game season now. Let's go. Lock it in. Ready, one, two, three. <laughs> Season two, ball. I'm happy for Doug Peterson. How great is that? That was the best from the best of winners from week 18. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have showed that Doug Peterson. Poor Colts uh, enthusiast Darius Butler joining us right now, who probably hasn't slept. So let's talk about it. The playoffs are on the corner, and let's check in with uh, a, our, our, our DB of note here on the program. Tell me about last night, this mega cast, ESPN. It looked like you were having Ooh. the time of your life. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, obviously, we had we had the Peach Bowl last week with O State, Georgia. That was a much more entertaining game, um, but we kind of had to enter entertain ourselves in the second half of this one. An absolute blowout. Um, Georgia was just a jaggernaut out there. Great season by TCU, though. You know, um, definitely can't shouldn't hang their heads down. But um, just an unbelievable beat down by the Bulldogs to go back and back to back. Shout out Stetson Bennett. So he was, okay. he was impressive these last few weeks that I've saw him. Okay, talk to me about this, Stetson Bennett. I know, I mean, you could not find a person who knows less about college ball than me. Like, <laughs> absolutely not, not. Not one person. So he's led them, as I understand it, to back-to-back -back championships. But he's not bona fide NFL draft prospect no. or anything. Do you think he's got what it takes to make it in the NFL? I think so. I think I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see him having like an 8, 10, nice little 12-year career. Um, he won't uh, go at the top of the draft, Whoa. obviously, because of his measurables. Uh, but he can spin it. He can make a uh, great decision. Everybody that's been around him, coaches, players, uh, people in media, um, they talk about how, how attention to detail um, oriented he is. And obviously, he's been coached greatly, you know, coming from a walk-on, back-to-back champ. Um, just impressive. You get a you get a curtain call with 13 and a half minutes left Crazy. in the national championship. Um, that's a special moment. You'll probably have a, a statue outside of that stadium. So we wouldn't be surprised at all to see him on the next level. Mm. Darius, did you go out after the game? Uh, no, no. You know, Pat, Pat took care of the boys, man. We uh, you know we had a suite there at, at the stadium. We hung hung out there a little bit after the game. You know, while the confetti and all that was going on, and then right to the PJ. Right home. So uh, you obviously can't miss those type of opportunities. Mm -mm. So, um, you know, obviously shout out to Pat for um, even giving us the opportunity to be on that field and have that field pass, Omaha Productions, and everybody over there. It was uh, an awesome experience. What's the PJ like after a game like that? When you're in a suite for a lot of hours, you know you have work to do the next day. What is that PJ like, that flight? Um, it was chill. You yep. know, it was chill. It, it was chill. We had a long, long day because we actually did uh, the show. We did a live show. Yeah. Uh, 10 o'clock local time, and then and then I think then Pat had game day, and then we did the live mega cast. So it was a long day 
um, a lot of hours. So it was definitely chill. Um, what, 345, 350, maybe back to Indy. And, oh uh, you know, obviously made it here in time to be up in Adams. I know. Out here free <laughs> balling. Thing. Out here. It's free Is it a bad word? It just means not wearing underwear. So it just means being loose. So. I don't yeah, think it's right. a bad wor word. Okay, anyway, right. let's talk about some of these games this weekend. We got Dallas, Dak and the Cowboys. They look ugh, less than stellar. Wolftastic, if you ask Gross. me, in there. Yeah, 26 to 6 loss to Sam Howell and the Commanders. So there are yeah. potential playoff implications on the line. How worried are you about their postseason hopes after this performance? Very. And I heard you talking about it earlier. It's been one of those. Uh, teams where they, they go one and done, obviously it's going to be loud um, at, at the coaching uh, ranks. But, yeah, you don't want to back into the playoffs. Uh, you don't want to do – Dak and his turnovers, they've been getting worse, I feel like, as the season has gone on. Uh, 15 turnovers, I believe. Threw Kendall Fuller, wanted to throw him two pick sixes back to back. And you're just watching him play, and he doesn't look like the veteran quarterback um, that he is. You look at that whole NFC side, mm. you know, Dak is probably – Probably the quarterback I trust, probably three, four maybe on that list. I'll probably put Brock Purdy over him right now because of uh, what he's been able to do this year in that offense. So definitely concerning. And then even on the defensive side, you know, they feast off of turnovers, have led the league back-to-back -back years in turnovers, something you rarely see um, in the NFL. But as far as down in and down out, uh, being able to get off the field, you know, they gave up a bunch of yards to Sam Howell and a, a couple other guys in the, in the last three weeks in the season. Not not very impressive going into these playoffs. I'm looking, I'm texting Hamilton right now, and it looks like the Bucks are three-point underdogs in this at game. Home. At, at home. At home. Interesting. And that's not the only team that's underdogs at home. The Jags are one-point underdogs at home against the Chargers this weekend. Mm -hmm. It's pretty disrespectful. You've played against Jacksonville quite a few times, of course. You've seen this yeah. franchise turn it around. How does this game go down? Well, you know me. I'm, 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 I've been heavy on the Chargers all year long. And, and Brandon Staley, you know, he always does something that makes you look at him kind of sideways. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, regardless of how you go into that last week, you know, the Giants, obviously, they decided to rest their players. Chargers decided to play theirs. And you lose Mike Williams. Hopefully not for this first game uh, because he, he's special. He really tilts that field offensively for the Chargers. So when he's out there, they're different, completely different offense. Eckler's obviously a beast. Keenan Allen as well. But when Mike Williams with 81's on that field, he dictates kind of where that post safety's um, going to be a lot of the time. So uh, him being on that field is a big deal for the Chargers. But uh, if we get Justin Herbert in the playoffs, everybody's excited about that. And Trevor Lawrence as well. This is a huge game for both of those young quarterbacks, um, you know, playing big-time ball, the biggest ball right now on this level for those guys. So I'm excited to watch those two quarterbacks play. It's going to come down to which defense can make, uh, you know, make that last stop. So which defense can make that last stop? I hear, I'm hearing a lot of chirping about how this defense is better without Derwin James, which is insane. Yeah, I, I would never say that. I would never go that far. Um, you know, both of these defenses, they've been opp opportunistic. Uh, I saw Hanley put uh, Rashawn Jenkins back on. He was the mayor a few yeah. weeks ago. With Joey Bosa being back healthy. <sighs> Who wins the game, Darius? I go Chargers. Darius. I know Chargers. Chargers <laughs> win. Okay. It's pretty much a pick -em right now. The Isn't Chargers it? Yeah. win. And it's good. We need Slater back too. Slater, Slater at that left tackle will be a huge uh, gift for those guys. So, but I'm going with the Chargers. And he might be. Sticking and I him. think, I think, I don't, I don't know how the lines change, obviously, because I don't know how any of this works. But I imagine the health of Mike Williams is going to play into that as the week goes on. I really do. Like, if it ends up being a more serious thing, maybe, it, maybe that changes a little bit because that's a huge thing to keep your eye on. And Slater, of course, being back. Um, all right, let's talk about yep. this. You know, uh, you think I wouldn't bring up my Darius Butler will be an NFL head coach someday agenda uh -oh. today, but here we go. We got coaching vacancies to discuss. We got five right now. Here they are. Um, and are, these are your, no, these are just the five vacancies. So we asked you before the show, we gave you homework. Uh -huh. You didn't sleep all night. You're getting home at three in the morning. Wake up, yeah. Yeah, give us uh, your thoughts. Uh, on the most attractive coaching vacancies to the least attractive <laughs> so start coaching at one. vacancy. Yeah. What's the most, like, if you if you could go coach somewhere, what would be the number one spot? If I could go coach right now, send me out to Arizona. Send me out to Arizona. Wow. Um, this is still a quarterback-driven league. Obviously, I'll be coming in there with a new GM as well. Uh, but you got a young quarterback in his prime, uh, supremely talented, obviously former number one overall pick. And you already paid him, so I don't have to worry about that. You still got D-Hop there as well. Uh, you got Buda Baker on the other side. So you have pieces to build, and I'm living in Arizona. So give me that <laughs> franchise to go out here and coach first. After that, 
Send me back to the Midwest, right where I am now with the Colts. Wow. You got a good core. Um, you got a good core of players out there. You have a general manager, um, obviously, who can draft his, his, his tail off with Chris Ballard. Um, and, and you're going to have a support from ownership. So you just got to figure out the quarterback situation, which is huge. But you do have a lot of good key pieces um, around that quarterback position. And then um, Denver. You know, Denver, once again, another great place to live. Russell Wilson, can you fix him? Do you bring someone in there that can fix him, that can get more production out of him? Once again, you have the talent and you have ownership who has the capital to go out there and do whatever they want to do with this cash over cap uh, situation. Uh, Carolina Panthers, I think Steve, Steve Wilkes earned that job, but that would be the fourth. Yes. And then Houston Texans, you know, it is a... It's kind of been a poop show out there. Back-to-back -back years, one and done coaches. They've done uh, Nick Casario. You heard some rumors about him going into the final week. It looks like uh, Nick is going to still be the GM. Right. So that would be my bottom. That would be the fifth most attractive right now. So here's what I learned. You you believe in Kyler Murray because there's no way you're not taking that. Yeah. That you you Because that's the question, right? Like it, he's coming off an injury, third highest paid, not a great year, blah, blah, blah. Does he have it between the ears? Is it his focus? Yeah. I, I, I'm hearing that you believe in Kyler Murray. I'm also hearing, is it fair to say that you would rather have blank rookie quarterback with the Colts than Russell Wilson? Yes, because of the roster. Because of the roster, um, because of the division as well. You know, I'll be in the AFC South, so, you know, that's obviously the, the, that's the first thing you look at when you're taking a coaching job, when you're taking a, a job, period. You know, can I win my division? How do I get in the playoffs? That's the easy way, easiest way to get in the playoffs. So going into the AFC South, once again, having good players on this roster up and down on both sides of the ball, you just got to kind of shift the culture a little bit. And Jeff Saturday came in, he's going to get – from what I'm hearing, at least he's going to get a real look at the job even after going one and seven. But he was given, you know, it was a rough, it was a rough thing for him to try to figure out with Matt Ryan and just that carousel at quarterback. So you got a good quarterback draft. Yeah. You know, you got Bryce Young out here. You got C.J. Stroud. Um, those are probably my top two guys right now. And seeing C.J. Stroud live in person looks like a top tier NFL quarterback. I'm not going to say that too much because I do want him to fall down four to my Colts. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so those are my jobs, man. Cardinals, Colts, Broncos, Panthers. Coach. I might even pass on being a head coach be before going to Texas. I'm, uh, I might come back and be a coordinator for another year before I did that, to yeah. be honest. We're not going to talk about my... Texas. <laughs> We're not going to give Texas any real estate, I think, on the show all offseason until Please. they do something that deserves it in a good way. I agree. Fair. I'm done. We're done. We're done with that. Uh, okay, now you drink your water because you're doing some heavy, heavy lifting here because you got one thing to do. It is the grand finale, and we got to take the road to shut down city. Let's go. We out in Detroit, baby. The Fighting Lions, the MCDCs, Kirby Joseph. You'll be seeing this interception ah! all offseason long. We're talking about what Aaron Rodgers is going to do. Is he going to retire? Is he going to come back? Whatever, whatever. Kirby Joseph picked him off three times in the same season. First Crazy. player to ever do that. So he got a pretty good year, Kirby Joseph. And this defense is a, as a whole kind of turned things around. Number two. Kendall Fuller out there watching Commanders. Let's he lives go. every DB's dream. You drop a pick six, and then you know what? The quarterback next play said, you know what? I'm going to throw it right back to you. <laughs> Kendall Fuller out of the slot on the outside. He's a baller, got his hands. You know, that's the way to finish the season. When you're not going to the playoffs, it's been a stinker of a season. Go ahead and finish it with the game like that. And the mayor, a guy that is going to the playoff, oh. Mike Hilton. Out there in the slot, he got his hands on the ball. And that's not really his forte. Usually a blitzer off the edge, good tackler in space. Uh, but he got a pick, and that's good going into a playoff game. We're going to be playing the same team, maybe with a different quarterback. Hopefully Lamar gets back out there. But Mike Hilton is the mayor of shutdown city. I just sent Aaron Rodgers that clip of you saying that Kirby Joseph just had a great day and that he's in shutdown city. So the next time he comes on, Pat McAfee, I don't know how – he, he might be. He might be on the day. I don't. I don't know. He should be on. We oh yeah, see. it's Tuesday. We'll see. Check out Pat McAfee. I cannot believe you guys are doing the show today. Nobody works harder or has more fun working than this team. We appreciate you, Darius Butler, for taking the time today. Get a nap in before the show. Oh boy. I will. I will. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you in a bit. Uh, and Colts could trade up. They could get. You know, they could get the number one. It's an interesting conversation of who would be the best coaching vacancy. Uh, I think Mark Ingram could be a coach. Here he is. Let's have some fun today, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for war.
I'm destined for greatness, that's where to my hobby that lead. I'm up on the scene, I told you I'm up on the scene. Yeah, I'm ready for war, I'm ready for war tonight. The side of the score, the side of the score tonight. Our next guest can do it all. He holds everyone in the NFL accountable. That's right with these things. Red card and yellow card will do that. He's won a Heisman Trophy. He's played running back at the highest level for the past 12 years. He's part owner of a soccer team, D.C. United, and adds college football sideline reporter to his resume. Mark Ingram, how are you? What's up, Kay? What's going on? Uh, I'm going to give a red card to this game I watch. I don't watch college football. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch this game. And then I'm like, Bama yeah. might have done something yesterday, huh? Hey, I think uh, we would have definitely put on more of a show than what was given last night. I mean, I, we all love football, and I don't think that was good for football fans, too. You know what I mean? So it's got to be better. How would, how would Alabama have fared against Georgia? Hey, the boys was getting their stride right at the right moment. So I think, man, we would have, you know, we needed redemption. Them boys want a redemption for what happened last year. So it's I don't live in a... You know, woulda, coulda, shoulda wore too often, but I know Bama would have been there holding it down for sure. Stetson, uh, who I just saw for the first time and never heard of him until yesterday, or Bry uh, Bryce Young, who I've heard a lot about. Who's who? Who do you who do you got? Who do you like better? I'm going Bryce Young, <laughs> ten out of ten. Now I'm giving Stetson Bennett his his yeah. due respect, his credit, going back to back. That's never easy. Leading the Georgia Bulldogs to you know the first team to go back to back since. You know, the best ones to ever do it, Alabama. You know what I mean? But um, I'm going to get a man respect. But, you know, Bryce Young every time, every day of the week, and twice on Sunday. Ooh, we'll see. <laughs> Chicago's got the number one pick. Are the Colts going to move up and grab him? It'll be super interesting as you cheer on your guy there. Uh, let's talk about this season. It is unfortunately over for the Saints. but it was And it was up and down. But you guys got it together at the end. You won three of the last four. I was excited to see that. So uh, I want to ask you not about the Saints, but just how you're feeling going into this offseason? Like, where are you at? No, I'm feeling good. Like, you know, obviously the season didn't, it wasn't a success by any means for anybody in this organization. Um, going 7-10, and 10, that's not the standard. That's not the expectation of what we want to do here in New Orleans. But for me, individually, um, I'm feeling good where I'm at. Uh, if we had a game this week, there's a high probability that I would have been, been ready to play. So, so being healthy and um, having um, good recovery, uh, I think that's great going into the off season um, with free agency. We'll see what goes on with that. But um, I'm focused and um, I'm feeling good. Body's healthy, so I get to go into off season healthy, strong, fresh, and see what you know opportunities present themselves. That's such incredible news. You could potentially play this weekend if y'all were in it. Do you have yeah. any thoughts about like as you wrap up the season? Do you look back at this year? Is there one thing that you carry with you from the season as you look ahead towards your future? Man, you just have to cherish every single moment, you know, cherish all the moments. You never know um, when when it'll be over, you know. So, and I think I did that a lot this year, like even running out the tunnel sometimes when I was, you know, them saying my name and the, the crowds going crazy, like, okay, how many t more times am I going to be able to do this in the Superdome, you know what I mean? So just taking every single moment for granted, cherishing all those relationships, cherishing all those friendships, um, you know, the ups, the downs, the successes, the failures, you have to cherish all those moments because um, everyone has a timeline on their career in the NFL. So um, mine's not over yet. I don't plan for it to be over. That's right. But cherishing those moments, you know, is something I'll definitely take with me. I love that. Now, I want to ask you about your coach because now it's like a, a year in review sort of situation. Not a winning record. First year, sort of, you know, last minute jumped in Dennis Allen. How would you sort of sum up the job he did taking over? I think he did a good job, man. I think we had several, several opportunities to change the trajectory of our season. There was multiple times where we had games that we were had control of that we didn't finish the game, games that we should have definitely won the game and we didn't win them. And uh, I feel like we had five or six instances where I could just think of that off the bat, where if you just, you know, half of those games turn our way, it's a different story. You're sitting there like a three seed, winning your division, whatever the case may be. So, um, you know, is there room for improvement all over the board? Yes. You know what I mean? But do I think that, you know, it's all on DA what happened to us this year? No. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, I think the players and I think all of us need to be accountable and knowing that we should have made some more plays along the stretch and in the crucial moments of the games that could have turned the tide 
the trajectory of our season in a positive way. But, um, you know, I think everyone with our hands dirty, everyone had some, you know, fault in it. But um, I think we have the right group of guys to keep going forward. So that's the main thing. And you ended on a, not a positive note. You're, obviously, this is a team that's used to going to the playoffs, used to winning the division. So, you know, a team that has bigger sights, like you're saying. But th winning three out of four is not bad. Dennis Allen just getting his feet wet. Obviously, he's been around the team a lot. But as a head coach, it's really hard. And Sean Payton's paws yeah. were all over that building. Like, it's, you know, it's a complete change. And then Sean Payton's, like, in the news every day. So I'm just going to show you the coaching vacancies, Mark, because you know Sean – I want to take a look at this. And you got some interesting choices if you're Sean Payton, right? And he's the bell of the ball. He's the hottest ticket in town. Uh, you know, you said he'd be good for Russell Wilson in Denver. That's interesting. You could get you, you could get Bryce Young if you're that Colts coach, though. Do you think mm -hmm. he'd be a good fit there? Do you think he'd be a good fit with Kyler Murray and the Cardinals get the best out of him? Where would you put Sean Payton on this list? Man, I don't know where I put Sean right now. Because the main thing with Sean is... Do you have, like, does he have some control, like, with the yeah. office and stuff? So, like, that's the thing with Sean. Like, you know what I mean? He has to be able to put his imprint, kind of like his fingerprints and his DNA on that team and on the on the identity of that organization. So, I need to see who, what what ownership and what GM is giving him the most access. Well, you know what I mean? Let's look at the because list. I would let you know the GMs. You know the ownership. So, Cardinals, their GM walks away. So, you'd think... If he took the Cardinals think, gig, he I could come think, in there and really, you know, it's open open table for him. Yeah, Cardinals, Arizona. No Panthers. No Panthers, no Texans. I doubt the Colts. I would have to say either AZ or Denver. I, I don't know if he wants to work on that project. You know, I don't know <laughs> if it's a project in Denver. You know what I mean? Can he get Russell playing back to Russell standards? You know, that's a high, that's a, that's a good you question. You said he I think could. Sean, I think he could. But does Sean believe that's something you want to do? Because you have a defense over there that is tops in the league. Now you have some weapons over there, you know what I mean, at the receiver position. Yeah. Can you get Russell Wilson going? So what about Kyler? I think Sean, Kyler is like raw talent, crazy, really highly paid. But, like, we don't know. We, there's something weird there, too, with Kyler, right? And he's coming off an ACL. Like, if you're Sean, are you like, oh. Because, you know, like, Sean looked at Jameis. You know this. And was like, oh. Right. Man, I can I can get that I can get that thing going. I know what he can mm -hmm. do. Talent wise, mm -hmm. I, I bet you he looks at. I would imagine he looks at Kyler similarly. Similarly, I, I, I would I would agree with that. I would agree with that sentiment. <laughs> I would agree that he is would be attracted to the strengths and the potential of Kyler Murray with the Arizona Cardinals. But so I would say it would probably be Arizona and Denver. You know, what I mean the bottom three. I don't know, but I would think that it would be Arizona or Denver for Sean. And if I had might, to pick from that list, there might be some other coaching vacancies. Unfortunately, of course, opening up throughout the playoffs and the off season. So we'll see where the bell of the. And then you got Jim Harbaugh. You played for John Person, but Jim's like, I want back in this. So it's mm -hmm. super interesting. Okay, let's get to some red cards here. It's what we do best. We haven't done it for a couple of years. You've been so amazing. I know it was the last week of the show. You've been so amazing covering everything. We have laughed on the show. We have cried on the show. And we've loved everything. But this is America's favorite game. It is red card and yellow card here. You know the drill. We're going to show you footage from last weekend. And you tell me if you think it's worthy of one of these or nothing. All right, let's do this. What's the first clip? Uh, I can see you as being one of those guys who's super competitive when you're in the arcade. Uh, I'm not sure this qualifies oh my goodness. As competitiveness what do you got what is this who is know. this i don't know what it's a red mean? card for sure 100 percent. i mean we going up over the, the border dunking at the local dave and busters like yeah that's a red card that's a red <laughs> that's not even how did he not break through that machine are you competitive when it comes to this kind of stuff like papa shot 100 percent. 100 percent. i'm trying to beat the high score every time but i'm not jumping over and dunking on it got so. it so it's okay <laughs> to break the ankles off of, like, your nephew on Thanksgiving, like Darius Butler, but it's not okay to do this at an arcade. Is that right? Okay. Not at the arcade. I mean, there's a plastic barrier over there that clearly says, <laughs> do not come over here. And we're going to jump over, dive over, dunk it, and then have to climb back out. Like, it's just all bad. It's, it's, it's a red card. It's a red card. Okay, Brock Purdy, yeah. this next one. He's become quite popular in San Francisco. He throws a towel into the stands, and the fan, not real graceful trying to grab this thing, huh? Hey, he's selling out. You know, he needs some oh of that God. purdy attire. So, uh, you know, he's selling out. He's all in. You know, that's what you want from your fans. You're going to be all in or you're going to be all out. So, um, we're going to give him a we're going to give him a yellow. We're going to give him a yellow, he man. He needs for an the support assist. Of purdy. 
Yeah. He, he needs he's somebody going all in. holding him back. He needs somebody holding his jacket. He needs someone who cares about him, who loves him. Don't let you fall. Right. Don't get the attire, but don't, we ain't going to let you fall over. Right. You know who, what I mean? He, he needs a Mark Ingram. He needs a hype guy. He needs somebody who's going to be there for him. Yeah, I see You just need somebody that's going to hold you down no matter what, have your back regardless. 100%. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, now just because you see other players doing it, don't assume that you can. DeAndre Swift learned a Ooh. valuable lesson in timing here. We love DeAndre Swift, Mark. Ooh. Yeah, we love DeAndre I Swift. Like this. I said, I'm I, I'm an RB guy. This is a red card, man. Like, I, I'm not a jumper. Like, I like to stay on the ground. I'm a running back. Jumping isn't in my forte unless the goal line is somewhere near. So, um, yeah, we're going to give Swifty a red card for not being so swift here. I can't believe that that happened. What if you're the other guy? The, the, what, making the tackle? Mm-hmm. I mean, you just. It is what it is. You got to, like, so if I see someone jump in the air, like, I'm going to try and, like, dump, like, boom, put him on his back. I don't like, know. Like, get off me. Yeah, like, get off me. Like, I don't know what you thought this was. I don't know, but. <laughs> Mark, we love you. The best news, maybe, that I've heard all day in all week, maybe, is that you could potentially have played if it was this weekend. Your body's feeling great. Your mind is right, as always. And we appreciate you. Mark Ingram, everybody. Hey, Cam Jordan's on the show tomorrow. He thinks he oh, can man, out... Oh, Cam J. He thinks he can out-media darling you. I don't think so. Hey, if there's anyone that can come to a close second, it's my brother from yeah, another. So that's true. Enjoy, He'll Cameron be on. Jordan. We'll talk about you for sure. Mark Ingram with the all Saints right. heading into the offseason. We'll have him back uh, throughout the offseason, of course, and throughout the playoffs. We'll be back after this. From our show, Cam Jordan, Rob Gronkowski, and Paul Bursey. Join us.